because, you know, you've always got those good kids. Oh, for goodness sake, we're the good kids. We were the good kids in class. We would always be the group leader or whatever. So welcome to Unleashed Learning TV and Unleashed Learning Radio. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, if your school is working to move from good to great, student engagement is a key for making that happen. But it's got to be the right kind of intentional engagement that's designed to make learning stick. So to help, we've got Mary Chiodi Jennings on today's show. Now, Mary is the campus principal of Copperfield College in Melbourne. She's helping to lead the Unleashed Learning efforts at her school and as of last year, is an Unleashed Learning Certified Teacher. This is a great episode for you, your leadership team, for teachers, anyone who cares about student engagement and making learning stick for everyone. Here we go. Okay, Mary, welcome to Unleashed Learning TV and Unleashed Learning Radio. Hello, William. Always great to see you. There's numerous reasons I'm excited about this episode, but what I was saying to you before we started is sometimes, you know, we want to make learning stick. And that we were working with leaders recently having this big discussion about the difference between compliance and engagement as an and as an unleashed learning certified teacher, you know engagement is a key <laughs> that makes learning stick for everyone. So you're the perfect person in your office on a Friday <laughs> with this. So I want to jump right in. And I want to ask you before your unleashed learning journey and before you were certified, that sounds funny, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I've heard you talk about your thinking where you thought about teaching rather than learning. So can you briefly tell us that difference, you know, what you used to think? I'm of a particular vintage. So um, the teacher training um, that I did was focused on teaching. And for many years, I planned for teaching rather than learning. And we had that conversation that um, being involved with Unleashed Learning and really being reflective of the practice, educational practice was always centred on what the teacher was doing. Um, and so I, I thought I understood how students learn, um, but I wasn't sure I was about being explicit about how teaching and learning go together. And that, that sounds strange, but when the spotlight was turned to student engagement, which is what I got from a lot of the work from you and, and Unleash Learning, um, and seemed that teacher the teacher's work, it was an add-on. You know, now we're going to talk about engagement. So we have to add it on to what we're doing. Um, but it's really part of the instructional model. When you look at any instructional model in any school, there's always an engagement piece. And so thinking about student engagement rather than thinking about teacher work um, mm. was was a strange thing to do. So because the two of them go together, now understanding the integrated system of Unleashed Learning, I would love to go back to Teachers College now and just kind of put my hand up and say, can we talk about learning rather than teaching? If you've had time to make that change in the thinking, then it's not about teaching anymore. It's about students learning. There was one teacher, she's in WA. This was years ago. She said to me something really interesting. She goes, I now think, what are they going to do with yeah. this? Yeah. I thought it was a great way. Those were years ago. I remember that discussion with Well, Karen. that kind of leads into what you were saying before about the compliance. Yeah. Often, often, um, you know, what the students are doing is really about summative work. I think that the concept of stickiness is yeah. what gets me. Um, so that's what that was part of the shift. Most people will be looking at this and thinking, of course, teaching and learning are inextricably linked. And of course, they are. And that's not to take anything away from it. But I think teachers know that on a philosophical level. What the deep study of Unleashed Learning's done for me is it's brought those two things together on a cellular level because Friday afternoon, you know, you're not thinking philosophically, you're thinking about what am I doing on Monday? What are the students needing to learn? And so I've, I've always been lucky, I think, because students have always been compliant. Yeah. They're happy to hand in their assignment. They're happy yeah. to do their exam. Sit quietly, just get through the yeah. assignment. Um, yeah, if those the results were not what was expected, you know, why aren't they all getting 100% because I've taught it so they should have learned it, um, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I'd focus on the, what the student hadn't done rather than how was I going to set them up for success by getting them to do what they needed to do to then be able to do that. So 
I have just written just to remind myself, I plan for student engagement so that there are multiple deep moments for the learning to stick because that's that's the bit that's missing because we can all have conversations about which students didn't turn in an assignment, who didn't turn up for their exam, and then we spend so much time thinking about what they didn't do rather than if we want them to get the 100% or if we want them to do well in a summative piece, It's all the pieces that go together in the formative. And the doing is the really important part. It's almost the Olympics or the assignment and the weightlifting throughout the year gets the muscle on. And you're talking something really interesting because you're talking about engagement for stickiness, which really brings us to the next question, which you kind of alluded to. Can you talk to us about, you know, there was the, there's a difference between compliance is task completion and then the engagement that makes it stick. Can you tell us briefly, like, what's the kind of engagement that makes running stick or how you understand that rather than task completion? So um, the, the, the level of engagement has to be really purposeful. So it's not just, um, I'm going to get the students to read to each other. So you really need to understand the science behind the learning and that repetitive doing it you and I have had many conversations about the gold in in this unleashed learning system is teachers actually understanding what the it is. Yes, just saying it's like what do we really want to get to stick? Yeah, and yeah. you're talking about engagement around that it, that thing yeah. we really want to stick. When I'm now seeing someone teaching a class, it's really hard not to have the unleashed learning goggles on. It's really, and I I really love that. And I think, you know, I've always said to you, I think I'm going to be the best teacher I can be the day before I retire. So it's always great to see different people and their practice. But if it's about getting through content, that's not the it. That's the compliance. That's the compliance. Like the, the real gold in this is, is it a particular concept that I think is super important for students to know so they can be wonderful, well-functioning adults in the future. Is that my it? Well, then I've got to get them to speak about it. I've got to get them to talk to each other or talk to groups, collaborate on it, summarise it, say it, you know, all of that bit that we've discussed before. Um, And that's the stickiness because doing it once is not stickiness. You can talk about the high-impact teaching strategies, but that's multiple exposures, which is exactly what lifting the weights is, you know, getting them to do it over and over, not always in the same way, but different ways. I think that's why good teachers are so good at their content because we spend all of the each time doing it ourselves. Well, it's the piece where, so I've done this a million times with keynotes or I'm on stage, I'll ask this and I'll say to people, how many people didn't learn a subject till you taught the subject and all the hands went up? Yeah. And I say, well, that's really interesting. Why is that? Well, that connects to the science. So what we're trying to do is move those weights over to the shifting. Yeah. So that's what's happening to the students. And it really kind of brings me to, I'm going to jump into the next question. When you see engagement going on, like you're like, that's the right kind of engagement. What do you see? Can you give us something that you notice generally? What do you notice happening? I notice that when there's high levels of student engagement, the teacher has lost their voice. So that's step one. I I see students speaking to each other. I see students uh, note taking, but then sharing those notes. I see students moving around, finding other people to talk to. I see collaboration um, with with the real intention of where the word comes from, and that is to co-labour, to work together. And so I see that. I hear things as well. When we started this conversation, I was talking about Teachers College. Teachers College was all about controlling student behaviour. Like if your class was quiet, you were a great teacher, and that's because you were doing all of the talking and the kids were just sitting there Last century, we sat there quite compliantly. This century, it's not happening. Not anymore. No. So the the element of control is really now shifting to controlling the learning rather than controlling the student behaviour, particularly in the last couple of years with the interruptions and the disruptions we've had and now the teacher shortage. I've had to walk into classes where I'm not the trained teacher. I don't have any understanding of where the kids have been or what they've done in their lesson. 
but it's really great to be able to quickly engage and say, get your notes out from the last lesson and find someone new and talk to them about it. Straight away, that gives them the opportunity to not only engage now, but it gives a bit of legitimacy to what was done in the previous lesson. And I think sometimes we forget that we need to circle back. To go far, you need to go slow. And I think that's what people are starting to see, particularly at our school. You know, we've, we've been working with you for a number of years now, and I'd, I'd like to say there's a bit of a critical mass now and people talk to each other using unleashed learning terms, like, you know, even with adult learners, you know, who's lifting the weights when we're running a staff meeting? Who's lifting the weights? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's a level of, of adult engagement that means that it's transferring to their consciousness. I think for, for school leaders, learning walks are a really great quick pulse check. Yeah. Really great because you don't need to be sitting and observing for hours. No. You know, you should be able to, like I do, if I'm walking past a classroom, I need to see engagement. Yeah. And so that straight away is a great conversation starter. You know the kind of engagement you're looking for. Yeah. So it's not engagement for engagement's sake. There's an intentionality and you know what that, that is. So there's two things I'm hearing from this is that when I asked you what you noticed, is there's also a pacing to that. When you describe that stuff going on, it's moving. There is an energy in the room. And the second thing you said was there's a common language now around engagement that you you and many of your colleagues can't unsee, which I think is really cool. So we're almost out of time, but I do want to see if I can get to two more questions because I think they're important. And you've alluded to them. Let me ask about movement if we can. Oh. Um, what did you think about movement before Unleashed Learning? And now how do you see movement in the classroom? I, I do remember a really pivotal conversation that you and I had with another colleague from, from Copperfield where he, he articulated that all of the learning walks we were had been on on any of the observations all the children were slumped in the same position. That was an image that really stayed with me. We will talk about movement, but I do want to also remind people that the classroom space is so important. I'm the lady that turn, walks by and turns your lights on, like step one. Just getting that energy, kids want us to let them be. That's what they want. Them, they want us to do that. So the, the movement um, was, I thought that was a really important thing. So the, the lack of movement, was a great conversation starter. I'd like to, for people to think that movement is a positive. Yeah. I think we've either over time, culturally, historically, if the kids are moving, something's going on. And it's it's always got a negative connotation. But, you know, there are so many positives that you can have if there's intentional movement. Yes. I'm and not saying just yeah. let the kids roam, you know. I've always liked the walk and talk. I use that a lot just as a principle when I'm dealing with behaviour. You know, it's really easy for even shy children or kids who don't want to meet your eye to walk and talk and share their notes. That I mean, filter that's we talked about, right? Yeah, that filter absolutely. Comes from that. Yeah. Uh, but that's intentional. You're not just going to rip that out in the first lesson. You know, you, you, you need to be prepared for that. I also think that there's a, a massive connection between movement and student engagement. Yes. Like we've got to, we've got to really embrace that. And we've got to accept that the room's not going to be silent. When students are moving around, when we're walking and talking, there's noise. But that noise doesn't mean that it's not good noise. I remember the learning walk because it was your colleague and he he made a comment. And he said, what do you notice? And he said, all the kids in all the rooms are in the same position. Yeah. And they are hunkered over the pen silently. Yeah. And when you walked into your room or his room, or I'm thinking the only certification team, but the level of energy that was in the room was just, you know, I, I could feel it. Planning for that intentional movement for student engagement is something that our colleagues in health PE, music, that's right, technology, they've been doing this for centuries. So, right. you know, they're probably thinking, thank goodness everybody's caught up with us. That's right. But there's there's an intentionality to that movement because it's about for well for PE, they're doing it. So they need to move. If you're talking about shooting hoops or, you know, playing cricket or whatever, the student is actually doing it. So there's movement. Same with food tech. You know, if you're demonstrating something, I think it's a really great time now to, to be learning from those colleagues who have been doing it for such a long time and they're doing it intentionally. So it's That's right. for the, you know, for the, the teachers who are in the room without the use of all those great props, we can still be doing it. 
I think what strikes me, what doesn't surprise me, but you keep using the word intentionality, which connects to the science that we talk a lot about, about what makes learning stick. And intentionality is part of what that is. So you received Unleashed Learning Certification, which I just need to say congratulations because a committee <laughs> reviewed that and the certificates behind you. So you have a lens and you've also have a, a calibration about how you're using the system and external people have evaluated that. So how can a school make student engagement top priority of the school? How can we do that? Well, I think that you would be very hard pressed to find a school leader who doesn't want student engagement to be the top priority. Yeah. So um, there needs to be um, a decision mm -hmm. at a school level. If we are interested in making student engagement a priority, we have to resource it yeah. um, and we have to ground it in the work because change is hard and people are tired and this is probably not the best environment to launch something that's going to ask people to actually reflect on their practice because that's what Unleash Learning is. It's grounded in science. No one's going to argue with the science of it. It's about the, the will to be able to do it because you, you can skill people up. It's about wanting to do that. So one of the things that we've done at Copperfield is that we've really grounded it in our teaching and learning framework as school leaders, we, we model it a lot. So when we have adult learning times, curriculum days or staff meetings, we now catch each other saying, what's our seating arrangement? You know, how are we going to greet people as they walk in? We're running those sessions like we would a classroom. And adult learners display very similar characteristics, you know. Learners are learners are <laughs> learners are learners. Yes. We all want to sit with our friends and yeah. we all don't want to be out of our comfort zone on a 4.30 in the afternoon. So grounding it in the work means that you, you need to um, make a commitment. We're not going to be jumping around. We're going to put it in our strategic plan. We're intentional about this work and it's going to underpin the work that we're already doing because an add-on has never been successful. Yeah. It's going to bring it in. And also what you said is, and that was not the way I thought you were going to answer that question, Mary, and I love it. What you said was the leaders have to model it as well. And it's part of what everyone's doing and it, and it has to come into what you're already doing rather than something else. And I think that your, your work um, with us has helped clarify for us a lot of things but also understanding that you've got to start with the leadership. Yes. So the leadership people first so that everybody's on board. I would not swap our journey with you for anything because I think it's been an amazing way for a large multi-campus where there are so many communication issues because we're not all on the same yes. site. However, we have intentionally decided that this is the way to go. This is what, what, what we want to do and putting it in to our aspirational learning environment, putting it into our strategic plan. We're forever talking about the vocab that's necessary to be able to share a journey. Like if you haven't got the shared language, that's you don't right. know what people are talking about. So as I said to you, you know, when people are talking about lifting the weights, everybody's clued in. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> we use that. And, you know, we, we live in a, in, a, in a world that it's all about branding. Yeah. So when when we know about lifting the weights and what's making learning stick and engagement and the keys and the system, it's pretty hard for people to ignore it. It's also, though, can I say the though piece, not to, it's also how learning sticks because we yeah. remember in symbols, in stories, in metaphors, we don't remember usually in facts, figures, and numbers. And so what you're saying is the system set up for it to stick for you folks as well. And that way it can stick for others. And it's it just a reminder. We remember these things. We remember the image. We remember, and that's how change really happens for people yeah, for long we term. We have an emotional reaction. The first time we, we ran a curriculum day with 150 people and we said, find your name on a table. People were like, what is happening here? I thought I could, they were like the kids. I thought I could just have a nice cruisy curriculum day where I was slumped over, purposefully putting people together on tables. So, you know, you don't have all your rock stars together. You have that's different right. people. And that's now become um, an accepted practice. So we just had a curriculum day a few weeks ago. You know, you get the people going, oh, who am I sitting with today? But they know they're sitting with someone. 
there's an accountability for the work that you want to do. And that's probably the last piece of the, the engagement. If all of the students are engaged, there's a level of accountability that means that everyone's going to have a turn at getting the learning to stick. Because, you know, you've always got those good kids. Oh, for goodness sake, we're the good kids. We were the good kids in class. We would always be the group leader or whatever. That's not building the capacity of the other children. So, you know, that accountability was really important. That's why we say make learning stick for everyone. And that's what you're talking about. So I know it's a Friday for you after a long week. Mary, I will end with this. One of the committee members who reviewed your application, she said number, whatever the number was, and she goes, it is clear something different is going on in the classrooms that she's leading and her thinking aligns with the choices she's making. How lucky for those kids. I remember that. So she had a number. So let me end this by saying, as always, thank you for who you are and thank you for the work you do for this world. I can't thank you enough. Oh, thank you, William. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. And I hope to see you in person really soon. Me too. Have a great weekend. Bye. So wasn't Mary incredible? We think so too. But now we've got a question for you. And the question is this, what do you or your school do to make student engagement a top school priority. Now, some of the best conversations take place after the episode. So jump over to the magical land of Unleashed Learning, leave your comment there, grab your free ebook, and together we can make learning stick for everyone.